ASRock motherboards and Ryzen 9000 series CPUs and ultimately premature CPU deaths. This was something that I've been looking into the last few weeks and I finally got some answers when I went to the ASRock booth on Friday afternoon. And unfortunately I would have got this video out earlier except Friday was the last day of Computex. I had to fly out that night so I didn't have time to produce this video. And then when I got back to Australia, my voice was just absolutely toast. I was so tired from that event. So I do apologize for the lateness of this video. However, that aside, let's get into the issue right here where I've actually done some testing here at home, testing out the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. Now, when I spoke to ASRock at the booth, they promised me that the issue is now fixed with the latest BIOS that is being rolled out across all their mid-range and high-end motherboards. So what is exactly the issue here? Well, when I sat down with the ASRock motherboard team, they told me it had to do with the EDC and TDC, which is the electric design current as well as the thermal design current. Essentially, they're saying it's an ampage problem that exists with the precision boost overdrive settings. In particular, these mid-range and high-end motherboards, say for instance, a B650E or an X670E Tai Chi, or even a B850 Steel Legend, these motherboards, of course, have the ability to run Ryzen 9000 series CPUs at their maximum PBO settings out of the box. And what's happening here is ASRock told me they were setting these settings, what they believe was too aggressive for what the CPUs were able to handle, at least the earlier samples. However, they do promise me that these issues have been fixed with their latest BIOS updates that they're rolling out for these mid-range and high-end motherboards. And they do tell me that the lower end boards, say for instance, an A620 HDV or something like that, shouldn't be affected by this issue simply because those PBO settings have been deliberately tuned down because of the motherboard in question and not being a high-end motherboard. So what I decided to do here was run some of these tests where these BIOS updates were being released as I was at Computex. And the results are a little bit awkward here, but let's talk about all that right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. So when the Ryzen 9000 series was first released, ASRock and all the other motherboard manufacturers, MSI, ASUS, as well as Gigabyte, etc., they get given limits from AMD on what they can set in terms of how they can drive the CPUs. Now, I'm also told there was shadow voltages that do exist in the BIOS, which users are not able to touch. Now, as Rock says with their latest BIOS updates, they have tuned these shadow voltages. And so the CPUs, although they should run a tad bit slower, they will ultimately be a lot safer and you shouldn't see any more CPUs dying if you update to the latest BIOSes that have the specifically mentioned PBO settings update on that particular release. Now, I decided to test this with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D and what I found was the Cinebench scores at least over three runs on an earlier BIOS as well as the latest BIOS on this X870E Tai Chi Lite was that the scores were identical. And in fact, the power consumption went up slightly after the BIOS update from 146 watts to roughly 150 watts. But when it came to the gaming performance, I noticed the speeds were identical and that it was 5.225 gigahertz on this Ryzen 7 9800X3D, but also the FPS was lower after the BIOS update. We had a 360 average FPS versus around 346 average FPS. So the results were low, indicating some sort of a change. However, the EDC and the TDC values were actually very similar. So nothing really changed there in those total values. So going forward, I'm going to give ASRock the benefit of the doubt for now. And hopefully these BIOS updates do fix the issue permanently. And we don't see any more CPUs dying on the ASRock subreddit, which when I was at the booth, I told them, look, this is a huge issue for me personally, because I've worked with your brand for over a decade now. And this is the first time I've had something so weird and so bizarre happen where Ryzen CPUs are dying within a few months. And they told me that the issue was quite minuscule in the grand scheme of things. AMD is selling millions of CPUs and that the CPUs is bound to be a few that are faulty. But I said this is abnormal because when we look at the subreddit, we can see that most of these CPUs are dying on ASRock boards in particular. 
And so that indicates that there's a problem in relation to a Ryzen CPU, a 9000 series CPU, and an ASRock AM5, and at least this case, a mid-range and high-end motherboard. And so breaking this down further, when I asked around other booths like G-Skill, for instance, I said, could your memory be the issue here? And they said, no, the only thing that the memory would cause is the CPU just not to boot at all. And so you have to try some different memory if there was a memory compatibility issue. However, also pressing ASRock about the SOC voltages and why they were differing on just the ASRock boards versus the other three manufacturers, they seemed to be pretty confident that it wasn't the SOC voltage at fault here. And they told me, look, the PBO settings were just too aggressive. Now look at this issue further with the PBO settings, the people being affected they said it should be the ones who have AIO coolers or coolers that keep the CPU as cool as possible, where then those PBO settings start to ramp up even more. It ultimately relates to temperatures as well as voltages. However, when the temperatures are low, the voltages and essentially the performance can be pushed a little harder. So they asked me straight away, did your CPU have a water cooler? And I said, yes, it did. And so they said, well, yes, that's gonna be pushed to pretty much the limits of the PBO settings within their higher limits that they pressed on with the CPUs. So what ASRock have essentially done now is dialed down these PBO settings and they said the issue should be fixed. And over time, the new motherboards being manufactured that are being rolled out on the shelves also have these latest BIOS updates incorporated into the retail releases. So fingers crossed that the issue is fixed. However, this is how I'm going to start sort of analyzing this situation where we look at what exactly happened here and if there is a blame to be placed who's the blame to be placed on and this is why i said to asrock look who's at fault here is it amd's fault or is it your fault and they said look when they're given these cpus they're given certain ranges on particular values that they can run with the cpus especially in relation to the pbo settings so asrock said look we're running within the limits and so this shouldn't be happening in a perfect world and i said well in that case here's where amd cpus would be essentially then running out of limits, which the limits should then be lower. And that's when they said, well, yes, now with our new PBO settings, we've lowered them down to match that of MSI, Azus, and Gigabyte. And so you shouldn't see this issue ongoing anymore if people have updated their biases on these mid-range and high-end motherboards. Though how I see this issue is, I, mean, I always like to do a car analogy here and there because it's the easiest way to make sense of it all. Basically, ASRock's manufacturing the engine, AMD's saying, look, here's the limits for that engine, and it should be with the schematics good to go for 8,000 RPM. And so ASRock's limited, put the rev limiter at 8,000 RPM, and then the engines are unfortunately blowing up. And what's going on here is that, well, the rev limiter should then be dropped down to say 7,800 RPM. And so that's what the new limit is essentially with these new biases. But then is it AMD's fault for allowing that rev limit a suggestion of 8,000 in the first place? And that's where it gets to be a tricky situation because in Taiwan, no one wants to place the blame on one another regardless who's an actual fault. ASRock and AMD, they've got a good working relationship and I'm guessing when I pressed them on whose fault is it, they didn't wanna give me a straight answer. And then we're seeing no release updates on AMD's website, nor are we seeing a direct transparent update and a release page from ASRock themselves, which I would like to see them talk it over and get down to business here and give the loyal customers the right option. And that is just to be completely transparent about this whole ongoing issue. Because for me personally, I see it as well, it's the customers who we should always be loyal to because they're the ones that have built up your business from scratch. And same with my YouTube channel, right? If I look at my YouTube viewers, the people watching the channel and tuning in are the ones that have built up Tech Yes City to this date. So my loyalty and my affinity is always with my viewers. And so I'd like to see this issue being pressed from both ASRock and AMD and release a joint statement or something like that, just to say, here, look, here's what the problem was, here's who's at fault, and we've fixed it right now. But also in the meantime, it does raise some other concerns for me personally. And that is, was there a problem in the early samples of the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs? And if so, even if someone has an ASUS motherboard, an MSI motherboard, or a Gigabyte motherboard, are they going to see issues, say, after three years' time when those warranties run out? 
And so if essentially if there's a earlier sample of CPUs, the earlier batches, and they've got say a weaker element on the CPU somewhere, and ASRock's motherboards are just exposing that a lot faster, a lot quicker, then wouldn't it be best for the customers to implement even safer values on those PBO settings? Or would it be best to just have an extended warranty or something to say, hey, we've got your backs on this particular issue and we're gonna replace these CPUs as they become faulty. So in the meantime, ASRock were very confident that the issue is now fixed 100% with these ongoing BIOS updates. And also if you come into a faulty CPU, then get it RMA'd and also update your BIOS to the latest BIOS with the updated PBO settings. So in the meantime, I will give ASRock the bend of the doubt here, but rest assured, I told ASRock, the issue here isn't so much that people can replace the CPU. The issue for me personally is that a lot of people buy these high-end CPUs, especially the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D or X, uh, non-X 3D, and it's the convenience right? The CPU dies, then they've got to figure out what's wrong with the PC, as in the case of my friend who had the CPU die while it was actually in the middle of a, a video shoot that weekend. So he needed to get his work and get going as soon as possible. And so that convenience factor is uh, the biggest problem here in a lot of cases. People don't want to be without a PC for however long it takes to RMA the product, or if it's a workstation, they just simply can't have that inconvenience of having their main system be down and out. So I've said this in the past with Intel CPUs when their 13th and 14th gen dilemmas were going on with the high clock speeds and just being way too aggressively clocked out of the box. I'm gonna say the exact same thing as I said in that video, and that is I prefer safer values. I prefer stability over this cutting edge, crash your system or crash your games or in this case, kill your CPU style settings. So I'd like to see this industry of CPUs for enthusiast desktop users get back to a safety norm and a stability norm over everything else. And then if people wanna overclock the CPU outside the specifications, they should be able to do that, but they run their own risk of doing that, right? But when people are using these things out of the box and these problems exist, then there's a problem where stability is then out the door. And so ultimately my message to ASRock and AMD is let's get back to stability here because it matters a lot more than just topping a benchmark score on a chart. Stability is always king in the realm of desktop PCs, at least for me personally, and I'd say for a lot of other folk out there. Though when I was at ASRock and talking to them, I also made a suggestion. I'm gonna make that suggestion here as well. And that is when you first install the CPU and you start up the PC, why not just give the customers a choice on what settings they want. For me, I'd be just going for that stability, right? These are the settings that we've tested. It's not the most cutting edge performance you're gonna get out of the CPU out of the box, but it's a stability setting and it's pretty good. And I'll always click that in like every single time I boot my PC up because I value stability over everything else when it comes to a system. So I'd like to see some sort of option when you first boot up the PC to have that option to lock in different settings. And I think a lot of people would prefer that and it actually would be a nice touch to the industry where you've got these stable settings that you can lock in rather than these crazy OC settings that in this case, even though they're within so-called limits, they were killing the CPU. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, hope this video was enlightening. And also if you have any questions or comments about this issue, be sure to drop them down in the comments section below. In terms of my 9950X, I'm still waiting from AMD to get back to me and uh, give me my replacement for the 9950X. I believe in Australia, there was a recent change in the manager for the Australian department of AMD, but I'm still curious to see. And I do wanna try this newer BIOS, which I wanna see is going to work properly with the 9950X because we do have a suspect motherboard still in question here that is in that system. And so far my friend has said with the Ryzen 7950X that nothing's happened, there's been no problems. So that's been stable in the meantime. So hopefully going forward, this issue is now fixed. Anyway guys, with all that out of the way, hope you enjoyed the Computex coverage for 2025. I had a busy time while I was there. Definitely did too much talking, I think and my voice definitely suffered because of that. But going forward, we've got some of the regular juicy content coming to your sub boxes. And with that aside, I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.